Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another very special episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're going to be looking at liturgical vestments with a special model. That's right. Father Rich is going to be our model today, and he's going to be putting on all the different clothes that priests wear during Mass and explaining their history <laughs> and their meaning and why priests wear what they wear. Now, I have no training in modeling, but <laughs> let's give it a shot. <laughs> All right, this is definitely my first uh, fashion religious show. religious fashion show. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it's always an honor to have Fabio on the on the show as a guest. Um, <laughs> Father Fabio, Father Fabio, Fab Fab Fabio, Fabio. <laughs> Fabio. Uh, you know, this is an episode a lot of people have asked for because yeah, they've seen the vestments that priests wear their whole life, but it's kind of mysterious. It's like this is something that really sets the priest apart, mm. and there's so much rich meaning and understanding behind them that uh, I think a lot of people had questions as to why priests actually wear what they wear. And there, there's great historical, from Greco-Roman times, you know, great historical resonances as it relates to the vestments that we wear. And there's different colors. And at times it's like, you know, what does this all mean? Why? Yeah. And hopefully, you know, with this show, we're going to be able to tell you exactly, exactly what these vestments represent and why the priests wear them at particular times in the year. That's right. So now before we do that, before Father Rich starts uh, busting into his priest closet and trying on all this stuff, um, why don't you tell everybody where they could find out more about us? Now, normally it's me, but since I'm in Ryan Delacrosse's seat today, we're going to shift to Ryan and Ryan's going to tell it. you. You can find us on all of the channels, <laughs> social media channels. You can find us on YouTube and all the other podcasts. If you go to CatholicTalkShow.com, you can select which one you want to use, your favorite ones. There you can find us. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, hi. Uh, you want to click subscribe and then the little bell so you can get all of our videos that we release every week right to your feed on your phone or your computer. Um, and if you support us with, as a Patreon, we thank you very much. We couldn't do this show without you. And you can go to, if you want to support us financially, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Catholic talk show. There you'll see the different uh, ways that you can support us. And we've got some uh, neat gear to send you to as well as a thank you. Wow, How did I do? Very good, Brian. Thank you. You might have just lost your jacket. I may have, but now I'm a model. So I'm <laughs> like, yeah. well, let's be honest, you were only on here for the whole time because you're pretty fast. <laughs> uh, I'm right. a model now. <laughs> I'm a model. model. <laughs> I'm a model. Um, so Catholic liturgical investments really do go back to the beginning of the church, right? And you see their development really start to be solidified around the third and fourth centuries where you can start having some discernible patterns on why the clergy wear what they wear. Now, originally, the things that they wore were what the everyday person wore, right? This was kind of standard dress for the time. But as fashion and popular mm -hmm. or- And, and specifically society, as it relates to academia too, and p people of position or leadership right. within, within a city. Yeah, I mean, most hmm. people would be wearing a more simple garment, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this would have been something of, you're right, like leaders, academics, et cetera. But as the fashion and what the common people wore developed and, and went away from this style of clothes, the priests continue to wear what they had always worn. So it becomes more and more, uh, I guess, distinguish. differentiated and yeah. distinguished from mm -hmm. what everyone wore. So the Catholic liturgical vestments have a very, very ancient um, lineage as to what they were wearing. Now... Before we start talking about vestments, I think it's important to talk about your everyday street clothes, right? What you're mm -hmm. wearing right now mm -hmm. um, and why you, you know. A collar. A collar and wearing black all the time. What's yeah. up with that? You What's Johnny up with Cash? all your black? Yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> Johnny I do like Cash. It. Sooner or later, God's going to come cut you down, you know? Like, <laughs> sooner or later, sooner God's, God's going to cut you, you down. down. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, this is what a priest typically wears each and every day. Uh, you know, a black clerical shirt, black pants. Priest pants. Peace pa priest pants. Priest, priest pants. pants. Um, so, you know, this, this symbolizes, you know, death to self. You know, that I, I, the, the whole idea is that I'm, I'm putting on clerical garb, one, to be recognizable in the community as a priest for priestly service, two, to remind me that I am, I am dying to myself 
in the succession of Christ and the apostles, Christ calls me to deny myself and put on that charitable vestiture of how I treat my brothers and sisters and how I reach out to those who are truly mourning and suffering. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's an appropriate color, certainly for uh, what we do day in and day out, to go out and be commissioned to meet human suffering. And the color, as I'd like to, to, you know, recognize it in many different respects is, uh, you know, white to symbolize the resurrection that in the darkness of death and the darkness of the sorrows of life, we have the promise of the light at the end of the tunnel, that, that promise of Christ sanctifying us through our sorrows and through our sufferings. So I do like the sense of I am collared with the resurrection. And that is that is certainly hopefully where God is going to pull me, uh, you know, as, as he continues to help me grow. You know, and even with the Roman, I mean, that is specifically called a Roman collar. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in the early Renaissance, that would have been something that a lot of people wore. That would have been a common thing that just any dude rolling down the street was wearing. But not the white Maybe even the white. Okay. It's almost like the precursor to the tie. Now, it wouldn't have been like a slide in. Basically, the collar would have been popped up. And, and there it would have been, been cloth. A cloth, and then a rectangular opening, and you'd be wearing like a, mm-hmm. you know, like an ascot or a dicky or something yeah. underneath it. So you still have that little bit of color there. Mm. And in fact, let, let me let me go get one real quick, and I'll show you. All right, boom, Shazam, you're back. Bam, look uh, at that. Uh, 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 look at so, that. So this is something that I picked up in Rome. And it's a collar. A Roman collar is typically one that kind of goes completely around around your neck. You have a little pin in the back. And then and this put that is... Put back on again. <laughs> Dude, that makes you look like Daffy Duck. Wow, 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 I so, would say that's more kind of typical what you'd see of maybe like Anglicans. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, at least in the United well, States. Well, yeah, well, this would, you know, your collar typically would come over it and you would have, uh, you know, a white collar, just a tip of a white collar. Wouldn't, oh, okay. it, wouldn't like look, look. it wouldn't look like this. Uh-huh. Your collar would come around it. That's that's nice. You will see some priests wear it like that, though. Yeah. True. Yeah, and the other and, way. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, the thing is, is with, with this, I wear this with my cassock. Okay. So, and my cassock collar yeah. and the lip of it, yeah, would come that's over. That's a good look, though. I like that with a little oh, bit of white coming out. I, I love it. I love it, too. Um, and, and this is made out of cloth, so you can kind of feel that. That's nice, that velvet. Yeah, what is that velvet? What is this velvet? Like and now this is this is what's called a uh, you know a rabbit or or like a, a dicky, mm-hmm. an amice. So you would you would have this on, and this would go underneath the collar like that, and then it would clip into like a white clerical shirt. So it covers any of your clothes underneath. Exactly, it covers any of the clothes underneath. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of typical clerical clothes. What would be traditional and formal and, and what is the proper vestiture of a, of a priest would be cassock mm-hmm. um, or a black suit, suit coat and, and suit pants mm-hmm. with a clerical shirt and uh, a Roman collar. Do you have a cassock? I do. Do you wear it? Um, I only wear it, you know, typically for formal events if, if it's a, uh, like I wore it for my, when I was installed, when I go visit the Holy Father. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but you have to wear a cassock. A priest has to wear a cassock if visiting the Pope. That's mm-hmm. one of the rules. Yeah, when you visit, when you visit St. Peter's, um, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Excellent. So now, when you're getting ready for Mass, what's the first thing that you do? What do you, what do you put on first? How do you start preparing to uh, vest up for Mass? What do you what do you think, Delacross? What's the first thing that you you think a priest? Yeah, would, you went to you went to yeah, seminary. You should, you should know this. I didn't get into those classes, but I you know there's this really weird garment that you guys wear under your chasuble, and it's got like you tie it on and stuff like that. It's just very strange. <laughs> it's very strange. I'd like to know what that is. Well, it's not golf shirts, though. <laughs> that's that's what I'm, <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to. I mean, I think is that the the first thing you put on? So the very first thing that you would do is is enter into your sack. Sacristy. Uh, sacristy is a very important place for a priest to prepare himself for Mass. Ideally speaking, it would be a place of prayer and silence. A lot of times in most churches, the, the sacristies are kind of like Grand Central Station. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of work. There's, the working sacristy is also the priest sacristy. So a lot of the needs for the Mass, setting up the chalice, setting up the patent, setting up the altar and the and the candles and everything, you know, a lot of those products are inside of the, um, you know, in the sacristy. So unfortunately, at this point, for when we're an interim level, we're moving 
moving in the direction of building a formal church, you know, it's it's kind of a crossroads. But yeah. my sacristans are great. They try to, you know, keep as much as solemnity as possible and quiet for me. Whatever they need, they come in and out. Yeah, and that's um, basically a room where all of the vestments are stored. Exactly. Yeah. And it's where this aquarium is too for, you know, the sacred species of, you know, Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament or in the precious blood. So that that's basically where you keep, you know, all, all the vestments, all the uh, chalice and uh, your unconsecrated hosts, wine, et cetera, right? Yeah, so all of the sacred vessels, everything within, you know, the needs of the liturgy is typically in your sacristy. Now there's, at times churches have two, the working sacristy and the priest sacristy. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for the priest, Entering in to the sacristy is a time to enter into solemn prayer and silence to prepare oneself prayerfully as one vests for the celebration of mass. So the first thing is washing your hands. So there's there's a prayer, you know, give virtue to my hands, O Lord, that being cleansed from all stain, I might serve you with purity of mind and body. Then once Do you, you use uh, holy water for that, no, you just wash, just your, wash hands your hands at, yeah, at the aquarium. Yeah. So, so essentially, there's a prayer before each step of getting vested. Right. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like, you know, this is like uh, if you ever see Batman movie, man, he's like step by step. He puts on the mantle and then the cape and the gloves and the belt. Right. Yeah. And even throughout the liturgy, <laughs> there's inaudible prayers that the priest says under his breath. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, at the conclusion of the gospel reading, oh, may those, the words of the, the gospel. Secrets, right? Yeah. The, may the words of the gospel wash away our sins or may, may the words of the gospel uh, wipe away our sins. So. So now for the people who are only listening on podcasts. Mm -hmm. Um, you could probably follow along. It'll be better served watching it on YouTube. But if you're only listening on podcast, we're going to try to describe these items for you a little bit as well. So this this first item is what's called the amice. Now, the amice comes from the Latin root amictus, which means to wrap around. Now, this is typically made of linen, and it goes in between your neck and your your it goes on top of your clerical shirt, so it I'm looks going like to, a really long bib. It's a bib, yeah. It, 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 and essentially, you know, it's a bib, and 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 it's um, it's similar to what the rabbi is, um, because that's that's also it's it's a bib, mm -hmm. um, it's to protect your neckline, uh, practically speaking, um, and when you sweat. It protects the linen that you're you're wearing with oh, your okay. with your alb, with your clerical shirt, your <laughs> linen clerical shirt as well. Okay. It's like a uh, liturgical vestment underwear. <laughs> <laughs> made up Hanes. Hanes <laughs> makes this here. This is <laughs> so you're, you're Roman wrapping Haynes. this bib around your neck yep. and it's going uh, to your mid pectoral and you've got these strings that go around the back and you're just tying it around the back. And and the ones that I, I typically like are do the ones that you could actually ones, do they have ones with lobsters on them? <laughs> <laughs> or unicorns, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, That's what go. it looks like. It does. It looks like, like you're eating bit. lobster. So, and then you, you typically tuck it in as I'm tucking it in around my neck and my collar. And this is what the so amethyst is. Every time you pray mass. Yeah. So, you know, this is, the, you, as you as you put this on, the prayer is, place, O Lord, the helmet of salvation. Now, this this sense of, you know, you're wrapping, you're wrapping around your neck. You're considering, Lord, place upon me the helmet of salvation, which is St. Paul, uh, upon my head to repel the assaults of the devil. Um, you know, as St. Paul expresses, be renewed by the transformation of your mind, right? It's, it's, it's really putting on the helmet of salvation. And, and again, there's practical reasons for everything that we do as well. Yeah. So it kind of, it gives you a little bit of a barrier for and, your alb. Uh -huh. And that should also cover your anus. Roman collar completely, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You see a lot of times like priests, they don't do, they don't use they don't, that. They yeah. don't mm -hmm. use the amice and, and you can see their, see their collar. Their collar. Mm -hmm. And it always seems a little bit out of place, right? Mm -hmm. Distracting. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> I see. Distracting, but I, it's, you know. And we were at the, the, the Catholic store and those albs are expensive. So yeah, you they do want to, you do want to protect those from. They, they, yeah. Especially the, the Italian sweat. Especially the really nice ones. I, I have typically like my, you know, my nicer linen albs that I wear for special feast days and my anniversary, Christmas, Easter. And then you have the albs that you wear day in and day out your work yeah. and your travel, you know, your yeah. travel uh, vestment. So, you know, the very next thing is to put the alb on. So. Boom. There, right. there you go. You've got you've got the a priest and an alb right now. And the amice is underneath. Mm -hmm. And you know, the alb That's this a brand is, new alb. This is a brand new alb. And we were together. First time you put it on. <laughs> it's literally the first time that I put it on. That's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah, and these are these are great, great 
Everyday Alps. Now, they aren't a sponsor like Ave Maria University or the most wonderful number one Catholic app, Hallow, but Solivari is my favorite summertime daily mass, you know, regular wearing alb because it breathes, it's cool, especially in the heat and the humidity of, mm-hmm. of summer. I, I love these. And the thing I love most about this is the dedication to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Ave Maria. You know, it doesn't look too dissimilar from what you'd see people wear in hot Mediterranean climates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It seems pretty practical. And you can see that this is why the people in ancient Rome you know, in their climate, especially in summer, it's very hot where mm-hmm. that would make sense to wear. And you still see it in places like, you know, Abu Dhabi oh, yeah. and Saudi Arabia and Egypt mm-hmm. where it would not be too different from that. Mm-hmm. So there's some practical yeah. use of that. And and there's there's permission granted to priests who live in tropical climates to wear a white cassock. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and and a lot of times I've seen brothers just have the white cassock or the white alb and that's what they wear. Mm-hmm. And then they just put the vestments over it, mm-hmm. you know. So, so, what is, so what does the alb represent now? And this is also don't also <clears throat> altar servers wear an alb, right? Um, altar servers also wear an alb, and you may even see a cantor wear an alb. You may mm-hmm. see the choir wear albs. Now, uh, any type of liturgical so you don't role, have to be a priest to wear an alb. No, and and really, when you think about it, every single person in the history of Catholicism has worn an alb. Because essentially, it's your baptismal garment. Okay. And and it represents your baptismal identity. And this is what you know when when you uh, when you get married, for example, that's the, the, the women are wearing a yeah. baptismal well, gown. Where does the word alb come from? Mm. It's from the Latin word white, mm-hmm. alba. Yeah. Right? Oh. Mm. So it's really just hey, this is your whites. Mm-hmm. Okay. This yeah. is your. You know. Tidy whities <laughs> no. And to bring this white garment unstained. And, and that's why I care for, you know, when you have, you have shirts, different colors, different materials, it's like you can wear them every day and like it hides the stains. White doesn't hide anything. Yeah. You can't hide from it. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't. And, and uh, d- d- don't some of them have like lace? I've seen some like white garments that, that have we'll, like we'll lace on that. them. That's something different. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So albs are the ones that have the lace on them. No, that's a surplus. So oh, okay. surplus. And then other other types of albs also uh, have lace on them as well. Okay. So it just depends on, on your style. I'm more of like a simple kind yep. of simple alb style kind of a guy. Um, but yeah, there's guys that, you know, love the period of time where lace was, you yeah. know, uh, in, in vogue, if you in will. Vogue. Nothing <laughs> screams manly traditionalism like lace. Uh, <laughs> see, you know, I always kind of get, I, you know, I understand the traditionalism and everyone wants to be very macho. Go back to the Latin mass. And I agree with traditionalism. I mm-hmm. You know me. But the lace always seems like, okay, guys, come on. I mean, really, like, real men wear lace. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, down to, it's down to the whole sense of, like, handiwork and the passion that goes into uh, preparing what is for Christ in the liturgy. Right. So to have women in your parish, you know, prepare, you know, lace designs for, for your yeah. alb, like, it's, that's a beautiful, that's a, a very, very beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of more of, like, the simple. I actually, you know, the, the, the only reason. And I have this is because of Our Lady. Um, typically, for a long time, I just had a simple white, uh, yeah. you know. So what's the prayer you say when you put that one on? So the prayer that you say is, cleanse me, O Lord, and purify my heart, that washed in the blood of the Lamb, I may attain everlasting joy. And, you know, that washing begins at baptism. And the blood of the Lamb the blood cleans of, whites better than any bleach. It, 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 really, it really does. So yeah. like the cleansing and atoning nature of what the blood of Christ accomplishes for us, washed in the blood of the Lamb, that is what truly prepares us for communion with the Father in heaven. Mm-hmm. So the the very next thing is a cincture. Let me grab that. Cincture. This is a cintura. Cinctures symbolize chastity and purity, and it goes around your waistline very practically to hold up your alb as you walk, especially as you climb stairs. And then uh, you loop through. And the other thing that it, it does as well is as you kind of develop these little loopholes here, you can throw your stole in a minute, which I'll put on. You put those through those loopholes, and then you you tie it tight like that. And then it holds your stole in place as well. If you're hearing confessions, um, but even just practically as you as you celebrate mass, another practical factor is 
the uh, wireless microphone. You can throw yeah. on the cincture as well, and it holds in a very convenient place to turn on and off it's the microphone. It's a tactical belt. For, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's basically a priest belt. That's yeah. what a cincture is. So the prayer associated with this is, gird me, O Lord, with the cincture of purity, and quench in me the fire of concupiscence, that the virtue of continence and chastity may remain in me. All right, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, the, the cincture a lot of times will match the color of the day of the liturgical vestments later. It does. Okay. And and I have I have basically all of the cinctures, including a blue one uh, for Our Lady. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so this is this is typically a universal color in respect to white, and you could wear it really for mm -hmm. any of the liturgical now, seasons. Now, is there anything that you do where you wear just the alb? Is there any time where you perform any sort of ministry wearing just that, or is there always more to it? There's always more to it. Okay. Yeah. Because I know with... Like you said, people who work in the sanctuary or, you know, serve in the search sanctuary, they can wear just the alb. I didn't mm -hmm. know if there's any time that that was, you know, the outfit. No, yeah. I mean, if if I was if I was serving, um, you know, like altar servers wear an alb. Mm -hmm. But if I was serving as a priest, I would be wearing cassock and surplus. Okay. And then at the Eucharistic prayer, I would place a stole over my shoulders mm -hmm. um, at the Eucharistic prayer, say if I was serving a bishop or- But not, not con celebrating if you're just acting as a servant. Exactly, <laughs> because I would be serving. All right, let's get to the yeah. next part. Next part, I'll be right back. And there's the stole. Boom. So <laughs> I wanted to start with this because you were asking before, you know, <clears throat> do you just wear your alb? Mm -hmm. At times for penance services or if I'm hearing confessions in, in the church, I'll typically wear an alb and a stole. Mm -hmm. um, the purple stole is something that uh, you wear for penance okay. um, and, and hearing confessions um, and meeting people where they are mourning. And where we mourn the most spiritually and what we labor through is, is our own personal sinfulness. And this is what the priest typically wears in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Um, but I'd like to start with purple vestments because it's the beginning of a new liturgical year every time we come to Advent. And in the season of Advent, we wear purple. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you don't, do you wear a stole when you pray mass? Yes, so there is always a stole underneath what's called the chasuble, which you're going to see in a minute. Now, movies get this wrong all the time. You always see in the movies they put the stole over the top. Over of the top of the chasuble. Yeah. Now, but you some could, of the boys in the '70s do, but oh, uh, you know, wow. yeah. different story. They were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, <laughs> you can also just wear your stole with whatever you're wearing. So if you're out in the streets or you're, uh, uh, you know. Wherever you are and someone asks for confession, you just have to put your stole on, right? Yeah. You don't have to be wearing anything else besides the stole to hear confession. And typically, you know, actually, let me show you that. So these are, you know, travel companions for a priest. You know, this stays in my car, this stays in my office so that no matter where I am, I could jump into the sacrament of the anointing of the sick or the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Um, this was blessed by Pope Francis right after my ordination, um, which I've had every step of the way. And I always carry on my persons, which I, I could show you later, um, but the oils are around my neck everywhere that I go. The anointing oils? Uh, yeah, the anointing oils um, that are renewed each and every year at uh, the Chrism Mass with the bishop. Yeah, so I mean, the stole is essentially, let's, I mean, for people who are only listening, it's a scarf. It, it's a you know, very long scarf, essentially, yeah. that goes mm -hmm. around the neck. Um, and why must you wear that to perform liturgical duties? Like, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it just... It's, it shows the authority of the priestly office okay. and, and the authority of, uh, of Christ. If you didn't have one, mm -hmm. could you perform a sacrament? It wouldn't, it wouldn't render the sacrament invalid. But it's a, a lack of form. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's exactly, yeah. So it's, it, it would not... It would not um, you know, it, if there's an emergency, God's not going to be like, hey, look, I know you, you are died. wearing your stole. Exactly. <laughs> look, I know you died, but the priest wasn't wearing his stole, so sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's not like that. Right. Okay. Uh, what's the prayer when you put on the stole? So the prayer that you say is, return to me, O Lord, the stole of immortality, which I have lost in the sin of my first parent. And although I unworthy approach thy sacred mystery, grant to me, nevertheless, everlasting joy. Now, also, aren't souls... Two-sided? So this stole here is two-sided. Okay. It's white and purple. Okay. So when you find yourself, uh, say, a baby is dying okay. in the hospital and you baptize, you know, or if there's an emergency baptism, there might be an emergent wedding, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and then this would be used uh, in that respect. 
Okay. So if you, you bless somebody's house, you know, you can you can wear the white. So basically, I, I think you've said it before that the purple is for taking away and the white is for giving. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, what's called negative grace. Okay. So that something is being taken away. Okay. Um, and then positive like the grace. Of sins, exactly. Baptism. Exactly. Where, where uh, you know, uh, when it's white, it is some is positive grace so that you are being built up, okay. divinized. Uh, so personal blessings would also, uh, it would be appropriate for the white stole. All right. Blessing a car, et cetera. Right. Very cool. Yeah. What's next? So what's next is the chasuble. Purple chasuble. So the chasuble is worn over the alb, over the stole, and... <clears throat> You know, these vestments have undergone many different changes throughout history and the style of them. Uh, this is more of a traditional style um, of a of, of symbolism on the on the vestment um, itself. But, you know, in a few moments, you're going to see another type of of a cut, which is more of like a fiddleback style. So there's what? Dalmatics? Mm -hmm. Fiddleback? Uh, so, so Dalmatics are for the deacon. Okay. And, and it typically, it, you have like a sleeve okay. for the dalmatic, which would be, uh, you know, fitting for a deacon to wear. Got it. Uh, I mean, this is basically a, for those who are only listening, this is basically a poncho. It's a mm -hmm. very big yeah. poncho. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's what's the symbolism of, of this? So the the symbol the symbolism of the chasuble is charity and unselfish love that you are clothing yourself, similar to what I said before, that you are clothing yourself in that charity. Okay. That that is what the vestment uh, represents. And this this changes colors depending on the day throughout the seasons of the year. Right. There's a lot of different. So this is the one that most of you would probably recognize. Hey, this is. This changes the color. The other stuff doesn't really change color. Maybe the cincture, maybe the stole. And you can put something on the chasuble, like, you know, maybe if you have a devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe or, yep. you know, so it's kind of like a, a symbol, free form. Or a symbol of Christ. Right. Um, you know, like the pelican is yeah. a symbol of Christ for, for me that I absolutely love. I'd have it on every single one of my vestments. You know what of, the symbol of the pelican is used in the churches? <laughs> because the ancients thought that the pelican would throw up its blood into mm -hmm. the mouth of its babies because yep. they didn't understand that it was chewing the food and spitting it. Yeah, it would. It would. It look. It appeared as if the pelican was plucking at its chest mm -hmm. and plucking from its own life to be able to feed its young. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And and um, but that's exactly how the pelican, you know, masticates and and chews up the food to administer to the babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's true. Uh, what do you what do you pray when you put this? this so thing so the prayer is, O Lord, who has said, My yoke is easy and my burden light. Grant that I may be able so to bear it, that I may obtain thy grace. Amen. Right. So, so you're purple, fully vested now. You're ready to go. I'm fully vested. The only thing that I would, if I was walking out right now, I'd be like, oh, where's my microphone? Okay. So th that's the only thing that yeah. I would need um, is, is a microphone. Now, we're going to go into the different colors and the different seasons. And the purple is worn during Advent, which is the first liturgical season. So whenever you think, when's the new year? Is it January 1st? No. The, the new liturgical year starts with Advent. Mm -hmm. And Advent, what you wear is purple. Now, purple represents penance, preparation, and sacrifices. It can also be worn at funerals. There are multiple colors that you could wear at funerals. Purple is one of them because of its connection to mourning. Mm -hmm. Purple vest vestments are donned to remind the funeral goers to pray for the penance and absolution of the departed. So that is that is purple. It is worn in Advent, Lent, and at funerals. Okay. Green vestments. Green vestments are for ordinary time. And, you know, it always kind of calls to mind a sense of hope for growth. It's like not ordinary, like, okay, we're just kind of entering yeah. into an ordinary time of the church. It's, it's ordered. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly what are we ordered toward? We're, we're stretching between the seasons of Easter and Christmas, and it's meant to represent that anticipation and hope in the resurrection of Christ. And it, our hope is rooted in each and every day. Our lives are ordered toward that hope as being followers of Christ. Yeah, so it really focuses on the, the proclamation of the kingdom, the, Christ's the teachings of mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah, yeah exactly. the teachings of Christ are very prominent in and ordinary. And don't time. they don't they stir up within the heart yeah. that that sense of hope yeah. and growth yeah. in Christian charity? 
Now, do Pretty you wear cool. different greens depending on the time of year? Like, I know sometimes they'll wear, like, a, a more spring green during the early parts of the year and mm -hmm. a richer green later in the year. It just depends on, on what you have the capacity for in your parish. Yep. Um, you know, uh, when I came in, this was really the only uh, green and litur lit liturgical vestments that we had. Mm -hmm. um, we're still, you know, growing out our what we have in the closets of the sacristy. Um, so I do have a lighter green mm -hmm. as well. But it's nice to have uh, different shades of green. It's nice to have different shades of purple. Um, and then again, to kind of show the progression mm -hmm. um, from lighter into darker as you get uh, deeper into the season. So that's probably, the green's probably the ones you wear the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. For the most part. How ordinary. How, 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 or, ordinary. how ordinary. Ooh, that's your ordinary greens. All right. Let's well, from what is ordinary to something that is truly supernatural. All right. Oh, my goodness. Father Bling. <laughs> supernatural. Dang. So this is what I mean by supernatural. Like naturally inclined, the human person is ordered towards self-preservation. All the philosophers say that. But the fact that somebody would lay down their life like Christ for one's friends you know, red is worn for the martyrs. Red is worn for the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the supernatural grace of God building upon our nature, God divinizes us. You know, grace builds upon nature. And how does grace build upon nature? By way of the power of the Holy Spirit. So red is worn for liturgical memorials or feast days that are associated with martyrs. So like St. Stephen's Day or St. Saint Stephen's. Saint Justin. Absolutely. Or, or St. Maria Goretti. Yeah. Um, so my birthday, this is what I wear. Okay. This was also what I wore for my very first mass as a priest. Okay. That, and that particular one. Well, unfortunately, the particular one, I think somebody... May have took hold of it. Yeah, so, okay, you're talking about that. Unfortunately, all of my first vestments somehow have gone missing. So, but I have had this since my ordination, and I'm really grateful that I still have this one. Yep. Um, because this was something that came to me as a gift. And the Feast of Pentecost was my first liturgy celebrated okay. as a priest. So for the Feast of Pentecost or a votive mass of the Holy Spirit, you would wear a red vestment. Passion Sunday? Passion Sunday as well. P Palm Sunday. Yeah, ba Passion or Palm Sunday. They're, they're both essentially the same liturgy right. where we reflect on the passion of Christ that led to his self-denial. Uh, you know, the self-denial of Christ that led to our salvation on the cross. And, and also confirmation. So mm -hmm. it's got the meaning of both sacrifice so martyrs passion sunday but then also of the holy spirit mm -hmm. so it's kind of red signifies the both of them it yeah. really does yeah okay. so next up talk about death this dying to self from from dying to self to the reality that all of us have to face is death and black vestments are traditionally worn for the funeral. Mm -hmm. And I, I wear black vestments as an option because you can wear purple vestments. As I mentioned before, you could even wear white vestments, which we'll reference for later and what that for yeah. funerals will, will reference what that means later. But black, I typically wear when there's like a massive traumatic uh, amount of trauma. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not natural death, but when a baby dies, you know, when people are, you know, mourning the, the tragedies of life, um, you know, death at times, it, it, you know, it, and really most times is, is something that's very, very hard to go through, but we go through with the promises of Christ. And that's why, you know, the darkness is met by the gold, the golden promise of Jesus and eternal life. And this vestment itself was actually given to me uh, by Ryan and his wife and family. And it's something that I, that I cherish and truly appreciate. Yeah. Anytime. Uh, you can also wear it for Good Friday. Mm -hmm. You can wear it for Good Friday as well. Most priests these days do not they own don't. black vestments. Yeah, most priests don't, and and typically uh, red is used for Good Friday. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's it's something I think that should be much more prevalent. You'll see these great old vestments in black, and they have you know death with a sickle on it, and mm -hmm. you know remember your death. I mean, memento mori. Um, I think it's, it's a symbolism investments that. Sh I think would help people um, contemplate their death more often, right? We can't, we can't the ignore the reality. We cannot ignore the reality, yeah. and, and, and that's why we have the death of Christ in the sanctuary. After, after they you know, look like, cool, too. I'm sorry. If I was a priest, I'd wear black every time I could. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's I like, love it. The, you wear all black. No yeah. fancies. I don't Just, ever wear Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, have, wear I, have two, I have two black vestments. I have this one, and then I have a black with purple mm -hmm. as well, and, I, and I'll wear those probably a greater majority of time for uh, funerals. Okay. Yeah. 
And then I also have a white with black, and uh, that's what I have my pall for if we have a full body burial. Mm -hmm. We'll put the pall, which is the burial cloth, over, over the, the coffin. The nice. coffin. Mm -hmm. okay. That's cool. All right, one more. Not one, but two more. And pink. this is pink. Yeah, this is rose colored. We don't it's call it pink. pink. It's rose. It's rose. Rose colored vestments. Yeah, rose colored vestments are <laughs> <laughs> are are used two times in a year: Gaudete Sunday and Laetare Sunday. And happening within the third Sunday in Advent and the fourth Sunday in Lent, these two uh, these two celebrations happen: Gaudete Laetare to rejoice and to praise in the midst of a season of penance. So Advent is a season of penance, just as a reminder. So, um, you know, Gaudete Sunday, you know, to, to again, rejoice in the midst of, to enter into joy in the midst of the suffering and the, and the mortifications. Lent as well, Laetare, to praise and to enter into that state of praise and joy in the midst of a penitential season. So that's what the rose colored that's, vestments. That's pretty cool, like design too. It's well, not that, like your other vestments. Back, right? Yeah, this uh, is this is a fiddleback. A fiddleback is basically like a tank top version thought, of the chasuble. Well, I thought fiddleback was a really bad band from Canada. <laughs> you almost look like you. you should, but they're you coming could, back. <laughs> no, that's Nickelback. Oh, that's Nickelback. 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 <laughs> Nickelback. Uh, no, these are, these are like, my preferred my preferred style of vestments. I'd I'd probably like a little bit larger one that that kind of goes it, down a little. He almost looks like he should be yodeling right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, those two Sundays they come from the name the, of the. The first word in Latin of the introit, the introit, the old yeah, pass of those yep. days. So, uh, Guadalupe mm -hmm. and Latere, which is which is the op the antiphon, yeah. you know, going into a liturgy, All is right. the introit. So yeah, and this one twice a year, so they probably don't get a lot of. You don't no. have to replace those too often. You don't. You don't. But wait, there's more. <laughs> then there's white. <laughs> so white is worn at Christmas. White is worn at Easter. And it's the culmination of the dogmas of our faith that Christ was born unto us, the Son of God, and God is with us, Emmanuel, to Easter. Jesus is risen. He is truly risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. The most important, important realities of our faith, we are wearing the vestment color of white. That's interesting. Yeah. So... Thanks for you know showing. I I got a lot of people have asked for this episode because they have a lot of questions because right. something they see they never really understood. But uh, you know you don't wear tacky vestments either, which is good. That's a good thing to do for the church. St. Andrew's style, man. This yeah. is pretty beautiful. nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's nothing worse than bad vestments to just set the mood for the mass wrong. You know, you see, yeah. you come, they come in and they're wearing something that looks like a poncho they bought at the Grateful Dead concert. It's just like, <laughs> come on, man. Just, you know, do something a little better for the church, right? Hey, Amen. Um, but yeah, cool stuff. Um, now, before we go, I want to make sure that we give a shout out to our sponsors. Number one is Hollow. Hollow is the number one Catholic app on the App Store. If you go to Catholic catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow, you can try this app out for free on us. It has all kinds of features. You're going to love it. It's our number one app for a reason. Our other sponsor is Ave Maria University. Ave Maria University is a beautiful Catholic educational institution in southern Florida, in Ave Maria, Florida, just outside Naples. They've got over 40 majors and minors. Uh, it's a place where a person can find their vocation, find their calling in life in a good, solid Catholic environment that also prepares you for success in the secular world. So if you're looking for a great college for yourself or for someone you love, go to avemaria.edu right now. Uh, so yeah, cool man. Thanks for showing us all this stuff. Yeah. I think a lot of people wanted yeah, to see this. Not, and if you only listen to, to this on podcast, go check us out on YouTube. Make sure that you, yeah, you, so you can see all this stuff. You can see Father Rich doing his uh his whole uh yeah. catwalk routine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and make sure that if you're watching this, click the like button right now. Uh, especially because he went through all the trouble to try all the Let me you know? tell you, I'm sweating. <laughs> I mean, he's falling from the ceiling and new vestments. It is crazy watching it. I'm surprised he didn't break his ankles. So why don't you give everyone a, a blessing on our way out? And the Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>